In this game here, between uh, New Sparta, Alpha Centauri, and Epsilon Eridani, each player, first at the start of the round, secretly chooses a phase. Uh, let's suppose that New Sparta chooses this card, and Alpha Centauri chooses, say, this card, and Epsilon Eridani, say, chooses this card as their phase. Now that everyone has chosen their phase secretly, then all players simultaneously reveal their phase. So New Sparta has chosen phase 5, produce. Alpha Centauri has chosen phase 4, consume trade. And Epsilon Nerdani has also chosen phase 4, consume, with a little trade bonus. So, so in this particular case, we would skip phases 1, 2, and 3, because nobody chose them. We would do phase 4, where Alpha Centauri and Epsilon Eridani would get the bonus that they chose. And then we would do phase 5, where all players would do phase 5, where New Sparta would get the bonus that they got. Now, if Alpha Centauri had, for example, chosen phase 4, but with a different bonus, then when phase 4 happened, Alpha Centauri would get this bonus, while Epsilon Eridani would still get the bonus that they chose. If Alpha Centauri had decided to, say, choose phase 1, then all players would do phase 1 with Alpha Centauri getting the bonus, all players would do phase 4 with Epsilon Eridani getting the bonus, and then all players would do phase 5 with New Sparta getting the bonus. In any case, after all the phases that have been chosen have been played in order, then the round is over and all players will choose a phase for the next round. Note that this means you get the action card back at the end of the round. So, if you want, you could very well choose the same phase over and over again if you want. The only way to guarantee that a phase gets chosen is to choose it yourself. One small thing to note before we move on. Now, if you look carefully at the phase cards you're given, you'll notice that there are two phase one cards, one phase two, one phase three, two phase fours, and one phase five. But since you don't lose the cards, at the end of the turn, why would we give you extra ones? The reason is because these two Phase 1 cards both trigger Phase 1, but they give different bonuses. Same thing for these two Phase 4 cards. They, give, they also give different bonuses, as I mentioned a little bit earlier in the example. Which one you choose determines which bonus you're going to get. I'll have more to say about what those bonuses are later, but now let's talk about what the game cards look like and what they do. The game cards are used in three ways. They can be played face up in your tableau, representing something that is in your galactic empire. They can be discarded from your hand as money used to pay for those face up cards. And they can be face down on certain tableau cards called worlds, which means that they represent specific resources called goods. Here are the details. There are two sorts of game cards, developments and worlds. Developments have a diamond in the upper left corner, worlds have a circle in the upper left corner. Let's talk about developments first, because they're a bit simpler. Inside the diamond is a big black number. This number is the cost of the card. It represents how many other cards you need to discard from your hand in phase two to pay for the card. For example, say I wanted to play terraforming robots into my tableau. The cost is three, so I put terraforming robots into my tableau, then discard three cards from my hand, any three cards. It doesn't matter at all what's on the cards. The discards go into a face-down discard pile in the middle of the table. I now have some terraforming robots in my tableau. The advantage of having them is, not only do I get two points at the end of the game, but it also gives me two extra powers. A special power on phase three, you can tell it's special because the little phase box here is white, and a standard power on phase four. The only real distinction between a special power and a standard power is that a special power is described in a little box at the bottom of the card, while a standard power is described at the bottom of the card summary chart. One thing to note about developments is that you can't have two identical developments. For example, now that I have the terraforming robots, I can't develop more terraforming robots even if I could pay for it. Now let's talk about worlds. There are two types of worlds, non-military worlds and military worlds. Non-military worlds, like developments, have a big black number in the corner. That number is the cost, and you pay for it just like you pay for developments. You put the card in your tableau that you want to get, and then you discard that number of cards from your hand. Doesn't matter what they are. Military worlds, on the other hand, have a big white number with a red outline. This number is not a cost. This is 
the defense of the world. These are worlds that refuse to take your galactic money. They only respond to military force. You can't really pay for these worlds, but you can conquer them. So, to do that, you need to build up a military force, which involves using Phase 3 powers. For example, let's suppose you had the development Space Marines, which gives you plus 2 military on Phase 3. Then, you can conquer the Avian Uplift race, since their defense is 2. Put out the world from your hand, and you don't pay anything. On a later turn, you can also easily conquer the Outlaw world, which has defense 1. Note that your military doesn't get used up. With the plus two military from Space Marines, you can conquer as many defense one or two worlds as you like. However, you can't conquer the Rebel Underground, which has a defense of three, not even if you add money to it. To conquer them, you're going to have to find some more military elsewhere. We can't have another Space Marines, for example, because we, you can't have two developments with the same name, but we could buy, say, an Expedition Force, which would increase our military to three. Of course, we'd have to choose the, bring out the Expedition Force on Phase 2, and then wait until the next Settle Phase to be able to put out our Rebel Underground. But when we do that, we can conquer the Rebel Underground. Uh, a small little divergence here. On the Rebel Underground, you'll see this little circle underneath the points. And on Avian Uplift Race, you'll see this little green symbol here. These just are extra attributes for the worlds, which will become a little bit more important in future expansions. At the moment, don't worry yourself too much about these little symbols. Now, you'll also see a stronger feature for these worlds. In other words, some worlds will have a colored halo around the outside of the circle while some of them have their circle filled in with a color. These worlds are special because they can hold a resource called a good. The worlds with a halo are called windfall worlds, because when you first settle them, they come with a good. You'll draw a card from the draw pile, face down, and put it on top of the world. But once you use up that good, it's much harder to get it to come back. The worlds with a solid color are called production worlds. These guys come into your tableau empty, but every produce phase, they'll produce one good, assuming they don't already have one. This is because no world can ever have more than one good on it. I like to think of it as the difference between buying a cheap disposable camera and a fancy expensive camera. The cheap disposable camera comes with the film preloaded and is ready to go out of the box, but it sure is hard getting more film into it. The fancy expensive camera, you have to get your own film, but as long as you do that, you can use it as many times as you want. The color of the halo or the circle determines what kind of good it is. There are four kinds of goods. Cyan is the color of novelty goods, which represent local entertainment and culture that is a commodity for other worlds. Brown is the color of rare elements, the transuranic atoms used to power the starship jump drives. Green is the color of genes, genetic information on other organisms. And yellow is the color of alien technology, ancient artifacts left around by the precursor alien overlords who disappeared a long time ago. Nobody knows exactly what the stuff does, but it's really rare and valuable. Although there are certain consume powers that focus on specific kinds of goods, the main reason for different kinds of goods has to do with a special bonus on this consume action card, called Trade. When you choose the Trade bonus, then at the start of the consume phase, you must first sell one good for cards at these prices before using your Phase 4 consume powers. Playing this action card for its bonus is the only way to sell goods. Although, there are a few cards that will give you powers that will consume goods at the same prices that you can sell them for. During the course of the game, you'll probably accumulate lots of different powers in the cards in your tableau. Just remember that on every phase, all the powers you have are cumulative and must all be carried out, but unless otherwise specified, can be done in any order you wish. And speaking of that, it's time to go back to the detailed description of what the phases are.